What's up, everyone? It's Dan Ward with the Key Group at eXp Realty. If you're thinking about selling your house this year, maybe in the next three months, six months, nine months, maybe even a year, stick around and I'll cover the top five issues that I see homeowners run into when they're thinking about selling their house. The number one issue and the first thing I see the most talked about probably or the biggest question that I get from most homeowners when they're getting ready to sell their house is, Dan, what upgrades should I do? Or what I typically hear is, I want to sell my house, but it's not ready. I'm not finished doing some of the updates that I want to do. Okay, fine. Well, most of the time what I see is homeowners putting in updates or updating parts of their house that probably really don't matter to a buyer or in some cases may actually hurt the sale of their property. Sometimes we see homeowners homeowners updating their houses with things that they want in a home, different types of design elements or architectural designs that, to be honest with you, may turn off some buyers. Not every buyer likes the same thing that you like. It's better to go with more simple updates rather than doing extravagant cosmetic updates that may limit your buyer pool at the end of the day. For example, updating your master bath, kitchen, or any of the bathrooms is probably you're going to be your biggest return on investment when it comes to selling your house, change the Formica countertop to a granite countertop, update some of the fixtures, some of the uh, faucets or sinks or door handles or cover plates. Make some of those simple cosmetic changes, but don't go in and make some kind of crazy flooring design uh, You know that may or may not be part of this year's trend or may not be part of next year's trend, which is probably one of the biggest mistakes I see is that homeowners start updating their house today and then they're a year, year and a half, two years out thinking that that's when they're going to sell and they should get that high return on investment from the dollars spent. And unfortunately, design choices change, tastes change what the market is looking for changes. And so, you know, going after some of those big uh, high dollar updates in your property or in your home may not get you the biggest return that you're looking for. That's number one, making updates that don't have the proper return on investment. The other component there is if you're making updates in your property, the biggest thing to think about is overall cost, but what you're trying to achieve as far as a return on investment in that update. So, you know, one of the key guidelines I always talk to my sellers about is it's great to put updates in your property, but don't outpace or outspend what is comparable in your neighborhood or your market. So adding gold leaf to everything in your house doesn't make the house more valuable. Putting in extreme cost updates to your property may be really hard for a buyer to justify in your marketplace. If you have a home that's fairly similar to the rest of the neighborhood, expensive updates that a buyer may not appreciate in the purchase price may not be a great choice for you when it comes to to investing dollars to try and sell your property. The second biggest mistake that I see sellers make is not doing the necessary repairs on their house. Buyers will sniff out issues with your property. They may not be the most savvy. They may not be the most intelligent when it comes to the operating components and the systems in the property, but they will identify when there's a leaky roof. They do notice when the front door doesn't close. They will notice when the garage door doesn't function properly. It's one of the biggest things that a buyer may turn off a buyer from buying your house or putting an offer on your property could be those repairs that you keep putting off. And in the worst thing you can do is to try to hide some of those repairs that need to get done. Most buyers are gonna have an inspection. And in that case, those buyers, those inspectors will find those issues that are with your property and it may sour a deal. So my best advice is to get some of those repair items done early. You know, the, one of the easiest things you can do is create a small list or create a tick list of a bunch of things that you wanna get done and hire a local handyman. Have them come in for the day, pay an hourly rate or pay a daily rate and have that handyman knock out all those small items that can turn off a buyer. Some of the easy ones that we see are light switches that aren't working or inconsistent light switches across a house, inconsistent cover plates or missing cover plates or missing trim pieces, door handles that don't work. Maybe there's doors that don't close. Those are the things that buyers will notice when they're walking through a house and could just turn them off just slightly. It's those little things that buyers are gonna remember when they leave a house and they get back home or they get coffee after a showing 
talk about how that showing went. When they bring up that review with their agent, typically they're gonna say, yeah, it's a great house, however. And that's where most sellers fall short is when they try to cover up repairs or hope that a buyer won't see some of those repairs that need to be done. Number three, I don't wanna say this is a controversial topic, but this is a topic that a lot of sellers think that they don't have to spend money on. And let me tell you that for every buyer that walks through a home that is completely empty, they are much more likely to find the small things in that house that might not be great, that might turn them away from wanting to write an offer because they have nothing else to focus on. Staging a property is one of the best ways to get the highest return on investment when selling your property. Finding the right staging company to create conversational spaces inside your living room, to stage the master bedroom appropriately, to stage the bathrooms so that buyers aren't looking into the corners, looking at things that may be small blemishes but might become big issues when it comes time for them to decide whether it's your house they're gonna offer on or the house they saw right after. Afterwards. So get the proper staging done for your property. It's well worth it. Statistically, most buyers for the half a percent to one and a half percent cost that it will cost you to stage your property, you're most likely to see a five to 15% return on investment on those dollars spent on the offers that come in. So if you're not staging your vacant property, then you should definitely consider it. Uh, it's one thing that we always educate our sellers on. And it's something quite honestly, we've had, we've had buyers and I've seen buyers and I've actually been a buyer myself of walk through a house and walk through a house that's very similar in comparison and fallen in love with a staged house because of the way it's staged. Buyers want to see how their furniture is going to fit in there, how the conversational settings get set up, how they can use a kitchen, how they can use that odd space that you're not really sure what to do. It's not quite big enough for a room. It's maybe a hallway, maybe not. So those are great ways to have a professional staging company come in, bring in their design elements and give your house a leg up compared to the other properties that are out on the marketplace. Number four, and probably the most impactful topic and biggest mistake that I see sellers make today, or, you know, at any point in selling property is pricing your house too high. Whether it's a buyer's market or it's a seller's market, the best advice is to price your home fairly. If you overprice your house, thinking that that's the best way to get the highest return and the most amount of offers and the highest priced offers, then you're making a mistake. Pricing your house fairly and making sure that buyers see value in your house is one of the biggest pieces of advice that we educate our sellers on. Everybody wants to sell their house for as much as they possibly can, but pricing it above comps or pricing it above what the neighbor's house sold for yesterday or three months ago is gonna likely cause buyers to have some concern about the property. There's two big outcomes that happen when you overprice your house. Number one, it sits on the market. And number two, you likely don't sell it for what you wanted to sell it for. And why is that? Well, it's mostly because the longer a home sits on the market, buyers think that there's one of two things happening. Either number one, there's something materially wrong with the property. It's probably got structural issues. The roof is probably leaking and it needs a new roof, right? So the second biggest issue is that it's overpriced. If you're on the market passing that 30-day mark or passing that 45-day mark and you're, you're not getting the showings that you were hoping for or you're not getting the offers that you expected, then it's likely that you're overpriced. Start with the pricing on your home at an appropriate level that's fair according to your comps. And if you have questions, obviously your partner real estate agent should be able to give you the right guidance on where to price your home and price it appropriately. One of the biggest reactions that we get when we price homes appropriately is a large inflow of showings, which then leads to a larger inflow of offers. The ultimate result is that you're going to end up with the best offers coming in. And what I usually like to tell my clients is that the market will tell you the truth. We can price it high on the other end of the curve and not get any offers and we'll immediately know that we're overpriced. If we price it too low, we're likely to get a lot of offers coming in. Uh, because the buyers are going to see a tremendous amount of value. We also talk about this process of price bracketing, right? It's one of the things that we educate our sellers on. Pricing your home at $399.9 does you no good for the people that are looking at homes between $400,000 and $450,000, who might actually see your home as a value if it was priced appropriately exactly at $400,000. So have this conversation with your agent about pricing strategy, making sure that you understand who's looking at homes in your price bracket, 
how many viewings have happened over the past 30 days or 60 days in the $10,000 or $50,000 brackets, depending on your area, across your price range, the right price point will add and attract the most amount of showings, which will then result in the most amount of offers and you selling the house for as much as you want to sell it for. The fifth biggest mistake that I see sellers making in this market and in just about any other market is limiting your showings. You're trying to sell your property, so make it available for buyers to see it. If you're only showing your property between 5 p.m. and 8 p.m., Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, buyers are likely gonna get frustrated and pass over your house and go see other ones, and likely, get, you're obviously gonna get a lot fewer showings. With a lot fewer showings, you have lower potential to get offers, and with the lower potentials for offers, you're likely gonna get much lower offer amounts. So limiting your showing times, and believe me, I totally get it. We've lived in a home and sold it at the same time. It's difficult to sell and show a property while you're living in it, but do the best you can. Make your house available for people to see it. Make it available in the marketplace. If somebody wants to see it, be flexible. Hold, have your agent hold the open houses. Get the traffic through your property. It's okay that your neighbors see it. It's okay that you have nosy neighbors and they want to bounce in and say, "What is it? how are these guys selling their house? It's, why is it priced at this point? You know, What are they selling it for? Nosy neighbors are sometimes the best referral sources for buyers. So don't limit your showing times and don't be too picky on who comes and sees it. Of course, only pre-approved buyers should be seeing your properties and only the right people should be coming through that potentially could be in the marketplace to buy a house, but don't be too concerned when you have the neighbors walking through during open houses. They're the ones that are likely to tell their friends, their family that, hey, there's a great house for sale in my neighborhood. We'd love for you guys to come over and see it, move in. They're a big influencer in that decision-making process. So again, one of the biggest mistakes we see sellers make is that they limit the showing times and they're too constrictive on those time brackets. So I got a bonus tip for you. One of the biggest mistakes beyond the top five that I just covered is trying to go at it alone. Selling a house by yourself is hard. This business is not easy. There are a lot of steps that you go through when you sell a property between marketing, negotiations, the appropriate contracts, making sure all the boxes are checked, making sure all the steps are followed. Selling a house by yourself, it requires number one, a lot of work, but it also, there's a lot of risk and likely there's only gonna be downside that's available to you. So my recommendation is to always hire an experienced realtor, someone who's done a fair number of deals in your marketplace, someone who understands your market, someone who's involved and somebody who can give you the right guidance and based on the right experience to get you to sell your house for as much as you can possibly get for it. And not only dollar wise, but also get you maybe the other components that you possibly looking for when you're selling your house is a possession time, right? You know, are you selling your house, but also trying to buy one in the same time, right? So a, an experienced agent will help you navigate that timeline, will help you negotiate those terms, and will put your best foot forward when it comes to selling your house. The other thing a realtor does for you is they help in insulate you from the process. A buyer and an experienced buyer's agent will look at a for sale by owner as an opportunity to potentially, and I don't say this from an unethical standpoint, but from a negotiation standpoint, a buyer's agent looks at a for sale by owner and says, I might be able to get my buyers a better deal on this property. Selling a house and, or buying a house is one of the most stressful pieces or one of the most stressful steps or things that you're gonna do in your lifetime. Uh, it's one of the biggest investments that homeowners in the United States, that people in the United States will ever do, right? So it's not unlikely that you're going to be emotional throughout the process. You might be upset about repairs that a buyer might ask you to make. You might not be happy with the offer amount, but an experienced realtor will help you navigate those waters and help you navigate the negotiation so you can get terms and conditions in your contract when you're selling your house that are in your favor or are at least fair to the outcome of selling your property. So thanks again, appreciate it. Hopefully these tips are helpful. Um, if you like the video, subscribe, uh, give me a thumbs up and stick around for more content as we move forward in helping educating buyers, sellers in, in this real estate space. Um, we're excited, excited for a, a 20, we're excited for uh, a <laughs> thanks.